Hi there, in this quick tip and trick demonstration video I'll show you how you can generate microscopic filter structures for the purposes of a CFD analysis using ANSYS Spaceflame Material Designer. Um, generally in CFD, uh, when we simulate filters, we, we generally do it at the macro scale, or basically a large scale, where we represent the filter as a porous jump or a porous medium. So we're only really interested in the effective resistance of it. But you can use CFD to simulate the complex flow through the uh, microstructures. Like in this example here, I've got a very small piece of a filter. This is randomly distributed fibers. And I'm looking at the, uh, the airflow through this and I can go further and look at how particles uh, traverse through the domain and are perhaps trapped on the filters. Um, so that's uh, another application. Uh, when you do this, obviously you have to create that geometry or you have to rely on scanned geometry. And, and I, either way, it can be a little bit tricky. So what I'll show you is how we can use Material Designer to generate some common types of uh, fibrous materials. Now, Material Designer is accessible under the component systems here. So it's just there, Material Designer, drag and drop into your Workbench project schematic. And when you double click on Material Designer, that brings up an instance of space claim um, with very specific tools for generating these different types of structures. Now, generally, Material Designer is used to support uh, composite type analysis. So it's looking at material strength, um, so the structural physics. But these geometries can also be used to um, generate microscopic filter type geometries which you can take into a CFD analysis and that's what we'll show here. So you, you can see we've got a few different types here, lattice, um, a honeycomb, there's random particles. I'm actually going to use this one, the short fiber composite here and this particular sub option is called the uh, randomized model. So once I choose that it gives me some tasks here. So number one, it's asking for materials. And because we're not using this for a structural analysis, the material assignment really doesn't matter. Um, so we do have to fill this in anyway. So I'll just choose the default there, which is structural steel. Click the green tick. And next it takes me on to geometry. Now what it's done here is it's given me a preview of uh, the fiber orientations. So what it's going to do, it's going to create a, a cube um, containing randomized fiber orientations. And I can control that with these inputs here. So for example, I've got an input that controls the, the volume fraction of the fibers. Um, importantly, I've also got orientation tensors. So these three values sum to one. So with them all being equal, these uh, fibers are going to be orientated in all three directions. Uh, if I wanted to, for example, have them all orientated in one direction, I could just put uh, enter the, the one in one of those boxes and zero in the other two. Uh, moving down, we've got the controls of the uh, effectively the length of the fiber. That's dictated by an aspect ratio and the fiber diameter. And, and notice the units here, uh, space claim automatically when it's in material designer mode, it uh, automatically goes into microns. It's got it highlighted up there. So I'll hit the green tick there and that's gonna just go away and generate that geometry for me. And it'll take a, take a few moments to do that. And what I'll end up with is a cube representing um, a small piece of volume with these randomized fibers in it. Okay, and there we are. Now at this stage then, rather than progress uh, using material designer and going through that composite structural analysis, I've got everything I need for CFD. I can just export that geometry and take it into uh, to fluent meshing. So what I'll do, I'll hit the exit button here and this brings back the familiar tool set of, uh, of space claims. So I can go into design and, and make any adjustments uh, should I need to. Um, the first thing I'll do though is just go into structure here and you can see that it's, it's actually generated uh, solids for all of the fibers. And um, in this case, I, I don't actually want those. I just want to look at the flow around them so I can simply select them all and get rid of those. And I, I'm left with this geometry here which is effectively the, the, the fluid domain. Now at this stage, you can, you can just go ahead and uh, select faces and 
create groups for your inlets, outlets, the side walls and, uh, and the fiber walls and so on. Once you've done that, export the geometry and then you can take it into, uh, into Fluent. So let's have a quick look at uh, how that works in Fluent meshing. It's essentially the same as meshing other, any other geometry now. So in this case, I've got up to the stage of generating the surface mesh under described geometry. I've picked the third option, uh, it's fluid region. It does have voids in it. So let's click describe geometry. Just update the boundaries. I've got my fiber walls here. Okay, I've got an inlet and an outlet and my sides, I've just set those to be uh, symmetry. Um, in other words, zero shear or, or slip walls. Okay, so I can update the boundaries. And then we move on to create regions. Now, when it creates the regions in this type of uh, geometry, it will detect the fiber voids as, uh, as dead regions. Uh, so what you should end up with is quite a large list of dead zones representing the fibers, and you should just have one fluid zone, uh, which is exactly what I've got here. Yep, I've got the fluid zone there. Um, now, sometimes I have seen it uh, identify some dead zones as, as, as fluid. If you get a few of those, um, it can be a little bit tricky just clicking down here and changing them all individually. Just another tip there. If you click on the top one there and then shift click, you can just select them all and uh, change the type to dead should you need to do so. Uh, but like I say, in this case, it's done everything that I wanted to do. So I'll just click on the update regions and then we can move on to creating the boundary layers and generating the mesh. Now that will take a minute or two because it's around about uh, three, 400,000 cells. So I'm just gonna quickly load in uh, one that's been completed and we'll take a quick look at that. Okay, put my cell layer on there and you can see all of my fiber voids have been nicely captured and I've got my boundary layers around them. So at this stage, this is ready to go. You can put that into your CFD simulation, uh, set up the boundary conditions as you need to, physics and so on as you would, and then uh, probably you'll be wanting to set up a, a DPM particle simulation as well. So it's a nice little way of generating these types of geometries for micro scale fluid filter applications. I hope you found this feature useful. Bye for now.